Has anyone seen him wear the same one twice? Is that really? <laughs> <laughs> I can wish my hand on how I am. Well, no, I, it, it, it depends how you answer the question. Awesome. Uh, I do have to answer this question. <laughs> so, when we started the user forum over 25 years ago, we had a number of planning sessions. And towards the end of one of them, there was this whole discussion that we didn't want everyone to wear suit coats, ties, and that. And it migrated to a discussion of what I was allowed or not allowed to wear. And so I was not allowed to wear a suit coat. And I got a little sarcastic. It was later in the day, so I said, what about a tie? What about a vest? Like, oh, yeah, tie, a vest, just fine. And so that's where it started from uh, day one. And <laughs> with the user form, it was to avoid being too formal in our meetings. I have one vest wearing <laughs> I can help you add that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you remember that call. That's, that's what I mean. All right, so as far as a vendor update, and why am I here with uh, CIQ? Uh, let's, let's go ahead and advance. Because the way we did it was 
so already identical to the way they operated in the class. They didn't need training. And then that's when the training did find that. If we did all this work in May and the training happened last month in August, it was very, you know, minimal and matter of fact to check box. But the, um, the engineers, the story we told in April, Cal Golf, that went live in July of 2023. The engineers there don't know to this day that their work is not running on ground, that it's running on the cloud. And that, that's, that's one of the solutions. So um, I lost all the pictures when this was, someone put this in the Google Docs. And, and so all the mug shots are gone. But these are the leaders, the, 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 all the people in the previous slide. And the, if you think of that high performance card as a high performance computer, all the mechanics in that picture were not you know, employees. But here's the names of, of the, the leads. And don't expect any of you to read this high chart. We do have hard copies if you ever would want to cure your insomnia and, and learn about what it is we can do for you. There's a full menu. Uh, it is important to us to listen carefully and uh, report back early and often. This is on the back side of that piece of paper out there, so I'll skip this as well. And the picture here got lost. Any of you at Oracle Cloud World next week, uh, we, we took a restaurant with CIQ. They have two nice meeting rooms, and CIQ's the seventh one, and CIQ's professional services arm is in the other, with, with Montes logo, so people are kind of directly looking. The Montes will still see us there, but that's, uh, all you're missing on this is a pretty picture of the answer restaurant. So with that, Forrest has the release. I need to pass on the back end. All right. Uh, go green. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Morris Burt. I work here at CIQ. I've been here for about three years or so. Before that, I was a sysadmin over at Boise State, working with the Idaho National Lab and Idaho Power and stuff like that. Uh, at CIQ, I've been in quite a few different roles over time. Uh, systems engineer, systems architect, sales now, kind of a generalized jack of all trades for our HPC needs in the company as one of our experts. Uh, you'll see we have Dr. David Godlip over there as well, another one of our trusted HPC experts here at CIQ. Uh, we have a great company that we run here. We are your trusted solution for HPC and enterprise computing infrastructure. Uh, as Devin noted, we have a fantastic professional services arm, and we're very grateful to all the great work that Montos does for us uh, in that regard. So it's great to be partnered with them. Uh, we have a few different software products that we support within the sphere. Uh, you may know us as the Rocky Linux folks. I'm sure we all, I'm sure we all remember CentOS. We were on for a long time. Uh, Rocky Linux is a spiritual successor to that that Greg Kurtzer, our CEO, put together after the whole end of life drama went on with that. Uh, so we're seeing massive adoption of Rocky Linux in general in the HPC sphere. You can kind of see a little of the history up here. Uh, we've got the Open ELA project going on at the moment between CIQ, Oracle, and SUSE, kind of looking at maybe making that Enterprise Linux 10, uh, something maybe a little bit different, but we'll see what goes on. You can see here that Rocky uh, the adoption in the space keeps climbing. This is check-ins to extra packages for Enterprise Linux, the EFL repository and Rocky. Um, so you can see that as far as check-ins go, uh, we're seeing way more systems on Rocky than we are anything else. Uh, and so just in general, the adoption in the industry is getting really, really wide. So you can see Rocky is up here. We've got Red Hat, CentOS Stream, some other ones like that down there. Uh, but in general, you can see that Rocky is getting quite adopted in the space. A uh, little bit more information there. I'll let you guys look over that at your leisure. Um, we have a couple of different platforms that we run here at CIQ. We have our Enterprise Linux platform, which is Rocky Linux, Ascender Automation, and Mountain. Ascender is our downstream Red Hat AAP, the kind of AWX Ansible sphere. Um, so that's for automation out on your architecture, wherever that be. Mountain is our centralized repository that we utilize to serve out all of the resources that we uh, have at CIQ for people. So, you know, wearable, obtainer, things like that. As Devin noted, that's what we utilized in this deployment that uh, some of the folks in Montes were doing to get those folks up and running a lot faster. Um, obviously, we know Rocky Linux, not much more I have to say there. We have some long-term support offerings around Rocky Linux. Uh, so we're not just the support company for that. We have a few other things, uh, long-term support, uh, different things like that, professional services, 
uh, kind of a whole galaxy of different kernel modifications, uh, just work like that that we can do for the Rocky Linux space. We also have a performance computing platform with support for AppTainer and Werewolf. I'm sure everyone's heard of Singularity, containers for HPC. I'm sure a lot of you have also heard for Werewolf, or of Werewolf provisioning for HPC. Uh, we provide enterprise grade support for both of these products. Uh, so if you need any help with getting your node images put together on Werewolf, getting your containers deployed out on AppTainer. Uh, I know we heard yesterday from the DOD that all of their stuff is on AppTainer, so that was pretty cool to see. Um, yeah, so these are pretty cool platforms. I've worked with AppTainer for a long time. Uh, if you're looking for support, you'll probably end up getting here one of the others for this type of thing. Uh, so we have, like I said, a number of different HPC experts that uh, work on that type of thing. We have CIT Bridge at the moment, which is extended support for CentOS 7. Uh, so basically we'll be providing up to three years of uh, CDE fixes and things like that if you're still working on getting off of CentOS 7. We have different support levels. Uh, and then the big thing that I'm here to spend my last five minutes discussing is to tease our big platform fuzzball that we're working on at the moment. Uh, like I said, we have different support levels for our support. Uh, you can find us afterward if we want to talk about that more. Uh, but as we know, traditional HPC is based on an architecture we've been using for about 20 or 30 years now. We have a head node, a bunch of black compute nodes underneath it, the bail. This is great. It's powered most of our science and industry for 20 or 30 years now. Uh, we're kind of seeing a big push in this space to improve how we do clustering and kind of change how we overall build our HPC clusters. Uh, we're seeing a lot of interest in bringing Kubernetes into the space. We're seeing a lot of interest in even domain scientists with a lot of computing experience being able to not have to deal with some of these normal trappings of a Linux system uh, as we usually have to interact with them when we do HPC, SSHing, Linux file system, and that type of thing. Uh, so we're seeing a huge want for an all-in-one platform, and that's what we're putting together with Fuzzball. Uh, Fuzzball is an end-to-end -end execution plane for HPC workflows, or workflows anything your users could want to do, from CFD to FEA to AI to anything else, by, uh, financial services, all that type of thing. Um, if you can do it on an HPC cluster, you can essentially do it with Fuzzball. We, long story short, are integrating Kubernetes into this as the underlying cluster manager. Um, so we've got a stack of microservices that run on that, that provide all of the execution units for uh, users to be able to build out you know, data transfers, compute spin-ups, AI training runs, all those different types of you know, workflows that we utilize on a daily basis in HPC. Um, in general, the platform uh, is based on two different components. We have on one side Fuzzball Substrate, which is our custom container runtime that we've put together that supports both OCI and SIF images. So it's uh, kind of our generic container runtime. Uh, everything in Fuzzball is done at the containers, so all of your user applications, dependencies, code, all of that is uh, in a container or you're bringing it in from object storage or something like that. Um, our stack of microservices has a few different things in it, a workflow engine that provides this YAML-based uh, language that you can codify your HPC workflows in, um, a data mover that, like I said, can interact with S3 API compliant object storages to push and pull data from the cloud or maybe a private thing like that you've got going on on-prem. Um, deployable on basically any Kubernetes, it utilizes Helm and native Kubernetes constructs, so you can be up and running with uh, the control plane of it in 10 to 15 minutes. And then much like you install you know, Slurm D on your compute nodes, it just comes down to putting that puzzle substrate on all of your compute nodes. Um, so this is a pretty interesting platform. I've been working on this for about three years now. This is the kind of big exciting thing that I saw people at Wisconsin State and generally in HPC wanting was better workflow capacity in general for this type of thing. Um, you can see in general we built out a lot of different use cases on Buzzball. Um, so any one of these things I could pull up and show you right now on it. Um, you can see we've got MATLAB, ANSYS tools, uh, simulation, modeling, WARF, open phone, QMC pack, a lot of applications I'm sure everyone will be familiar with. Um, on the AI side of things, we support everything that you can imagine there. Um, you know, PyTorch, TensorFlow, we run, um, you know, uh, Stable Diffusion, Lama 2.3, all that type of stuff on it. Uh, we do interactivity with Jupyter Notebooks, so you can run that type of thing on there, and obviously other interactive use cases like MATLAB, ANSYS, that type of stuff. Um, so, you know, exascale computing project applications, stuff like that, we've tested quite a few different things on it. Um, we have support for MPI and there's some of the parallel workloads, as well as GasNet-based workloads, if you're in that space of using some of those kind of more, you know, national lab-focused special MPI, uh, you know, like constructs. Um, you can see here a image of what the main interface of Puzzball looks like. Uh, everything is done out of a GUI in this, so we provide this graphical draft and raw editor for your users. So if they're not having to you know, generally code up their workflows. 
Um, you know, users don't have to connect to this via SSH. This is all API driven. This is all just going to a website that your uh, cluster is providing, um, just based on like a web server or something like that. Um, so this is all uh, pretty, like I said, API driven. And in general, your users aren't having to you know, log in nodes, manage those file systems, do that type of thing anymore. Um, putting together, in this case, uh, doing a lot of chat example um, becomes just as simple as dragging and dropping these different components into it. Um, you can see a brief sample of what our YAML-based description language looks like here. Um, so this is what your ultimately things can be codified in. When we run a workflow, we get a little message here. And then in general, this is what the main interface looks like uh, when a job is actually running on it. So you can see we have a collection of uh, volumes that are being created here, container images that are being pulled, uh, data that's coming out of S3. We're spinning up these compute jobs to run, you know, in this case, uh, an inference example. But uh, in general, we can do a lot of different things with that. We have some upcoming events. Uh, the CIP teams at Oracle Cloud World next week. Uh, Dr. Dave is speaking at, at HPC and I on Wall Street in New York. I'll be speaking at Open Radio Day in Philadelphia, and it will be at SC24. We have a ton of Rocky Leg shirts. Please come take them from us. They are HPC Users Forum 24 branded, so we would like you to get them. Thank you all for your attention. It's been a wonderful conference. We have a minute or two for questions. Okay, all right, ready?